Welcome to another edition of Ketamine Clinics of Los Angeles Facebook Live. It's Friday afternoon and we're very glad to see you. It's been a very, very busy June and uh, we're very much looking forward to a 4th of July celebration of our country's birthday. We're uh, not big flag wavers, but we are patriots. We love our country and we love what it has stood for and the leadership it has provided in the world. I'm not going into current events at all, except to say that we have great traditions and I'm very happy to see them honored at this time. Uh, we've had great press. Uh, go see us on Wired Magazine and on the web or buy a copy of LA Magazine. LA Magazine has a great spread. Rennie uh, Chun, did the uh, writing, it did great writing, and I was honored to actually be photographed by, uh, by uh, Ron. Dan. Dan Winters, mm -hmm. thank you. Dan Winters did an amazing job. I, I, I'm in very illustrious company. He's done some amazing suites of photographs of gorgeous animals and some political animals too. <laughs> anyway, okay. <laughs> uh, Dan did a good job. Rennie did a good job, and it it's, it's, tells nice stories about the clinic. I'll just chime in real quickly. I mean, yes, very cute political animals indeed, but really iconic uh, people from all walks of life. I mean, Dan Winters really is a remarkable photographer. I really personally loved meeting him. Uh, this is Sam, as everyone knows, I think, at this point behind the camera talking. And he has shot everything from your favorite musician, actor, you name it. He's shot him, National Geographic, everything. So really cool. He does beautiful work if you want to check him out uh, in uh, other capacities. Just wanted to throw that out there. Thank you, Sam. Uh, we're also uh, helping to host uh, the, uh, an event put on by the uh, Coalition to Sub Salute America's Heroes. This is an organization that really helps those who've been injured protecting our freedoms to reintegrate to life at home. It may be as simple as a loan to help to pay their, uh, or even a grant, to pay the gas bill, or to pay the electric bill, or to get some medicine. It may be helping to go to school, finding a job. It may be finding some health care, or helping to fund that health care. The Coalition to Salute America's Heroes does a great job. I'm honored to be participating with them in a fundraiser on Sunday night. That's July 2nd. Um, what time is it? It's at 6 p.m. Where is it? It's at the uh, CNO Cucina restaurant in Marina del Rey on Washington Boulevard. Hey, I heard they have good Italian food. Maybe I'll see you there. An excellent location. Uh, excellent food. There have two locations. One is right near the beach. The one is right near Lincoln Boulevard. We're at the one near Lincoln Boulevard. All right. Anybody I'll see you there. in the sound of my voice who wants to come by, let us know. Uh, the, our website has a link to the event. In any event, I wanted to tell you a little about PTSD today. That's post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, not everyone calls it a disorder, but definitely post-traumatic stress. The trauma of going to war really takes a toll on people, both physically often and emotionally. One of the things that happens is a cluster of, a quartet of symptoms uh, that are called PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. What is this? This is memory, this is avoidance, this is uh, decline in feelings toward oneself and others, and this is hypervigilance. What do I mean by that? People re-experience the traumatic event. They may experience it during the day. They may experience it in nightmares at night. It may come to them as a kind of a flashback. This is not a voluntary memory that suddenly appears. This, is, this comes unbidden and unannounced and demands attention. So this is actually a great disruptor of people's ability to think and to concentrate. 
And because it comes unbidden, it really causes them to lose confidence in themselves. It's a terrible burden to have. The nightmares are terrible. They may have triggering events or triggering stimuli. It can be something that seems quite innocuous to us. A sound, a pattern of light and dark. It may remind them of perhaps a leafy jungle or perhaps the way the, uh, the sky looked when they were in Afghanistan. Maybe it's just a smell, but it triggers a whole sequence. It really comes unbidden and is not controllable once it comes. It's very, very difficult for them. So there's the memory issue. Then there's the avoidance issue. People get reminded of their trauma by maybe an array of signs at a particular intersection. Maybe the way a particular building lobby looks or the entrance. Maybe it's driving into a parking structure. This, um, this, really, this avoidance really causes them to constrict their lives in unpredictable and, and very disconcerting ways. Third, they lose their, their sense of themselves and others. They become less and less enthusiastic about themselves and less confident in their own evaluations. They actually become kind of hopeless and their self-esteem declines substantially. The last thing is they are hypervigilant. People decide that they really can't sit in a room unless they can sit with their back to the wall and their eyes on the door. They spend so much time being hypervigilant and jittery that they're both very tired and yet they have disturbed sleep. They can't really sleep soundly because they're so preoccupied with, with being able to guard against the danger that they feel is imminent. Post-traumatic stress disorder is horrible, and yet it's, it's a difficult thing to treat. Many treatments have been tried. Ketamine is working extremely well for the symptoms insofar as they address suicidality and depression. Uh, Post-traumatic stress disorder people are very prone to considering suicide and they're very prone to using substances to ease their discomfort. Um, ketamine helps with both of those. It's particularly remarkable for suicide. It really gets the impulse to harm oneself under control. So we are more and more looking to take care of people with post-traumatic stress disorder who are suffering from suicidality and from depression. The disorder itself may not be curable, but the symptoms that accompany it can be made better. And these people have done so much, given so much to our country, we should give back to them. So that's what I'm moving toward in my practice and in my professional focus. We're continuing with depression, we're continuing with pain, but we're moving toward PTSD as well. I'm glad you were able to join us today, and I look forward to seeing you again next week, 3 o'clock Pacific Daylight Time, Ketamine on Facebook Live. I think, though, actually, there's a good chance we may not see you next week, Dr. Mandel. Well, I'm uh, following the benefit on Sunday night uh, coalition to salute American's heroes. Um, I'm sailing with my wife to Catalina Island for a, a week of no phone, no computer, no ketamine. I will, in fact, do a lot of reading about ketamine, but I'm not going to do anything f that smacks of work. Uh, I am also considering a Facebook Live from Catalina. Oh, wow. If, I didn't even know you had that connectivity available. There, there, is, there is pretty good phone service in one of the harbors. This is not a promise. This is a work in progress, but I am looking forward. I am definitely going to attempt to rejoin you next Friday, 3 p.m., Catalina time. 
<laughs> well, we all love your commitment, and so hopefully people will tune in around three. Uh, as you know, we can sometimes be a little bit after that, but let's say maybe what between three and three thirty, they could check in. Maybe you'll be there, maybe you won't. But we always appreciate hearing from you, and thank you for making the time. Thank you for joining us. Have a great Fourth of July.